Hey everybody, this is Dark Guardsman. We're back with part two of uh, making a snow power generator. Uh, so with the last part, we went ahead and set up all the preliminary classes um, that we needed to get working. We got the client proxy, common proxy, their actual mod class, the block, and the tile entity. We got it loaded in the world, confirmed that it does exist, confirmed that we do have an item, and confirmed that we do have a block, and that they do show up in a credit tab for use. But there's no graphics, so the next step in the process is actually to make some kind of graphics for this so we can see what we're doing, see what we're working with, actually look at the item, see something other than the unlocalized name and actually get everything going. So the first thing we're gonna do is of course hit up the localized name. Now I'm gonna go ahead and open up the structure for ICBM Classic because I always forget how this structure actually looks like and it's just by far just easier to look at another mod to uh, remember the process. You'll see a lot of mod developers um, actually make tutorials and be like hey this is how you do it and everything and they never really show you that they have probably got like a text document off on the left or right or maybe they do actually remember it from memory. Uh, so we'll go ahead and actually do this and uh, us .lang. So this will be uh, English United States is what this actually stands for and you will have the English UK as well if you ever made a language for that although you, the language is not that much different that you actually need to uh, for the actual localization you just literally tile snow power generator snow name so we can pop back over here tile snow power which is the name of our mod uh, comma or colon because of uh, the fact that we have a separation uh, and then this would be generator dot snow. So this is actually what we set in the thing and dot name at the end because that's how Minecraft actually sets it. And then we go equals and we're just going to call this snow generator. And of course you can put other things to this localization later. Like if we had a creative tab, you put the creative tab in here. If you had say a different name for the block versus item, you could put it in there as well. Uh, say you had tooltips as well, you could put them in here. Um, there's a variety we can put in here. right now. This is literally the only thing to be in here. So it's a bit much for a single line we could actually have probably just set the text in the actual system but we're going to localize it in case somebody comes in here and wants to add say like chinese russian uh, i actually don't know what all these are i think it's spanish right there and that is german so we have a variety of languages we could actually implement um so that's good language file and then of course because this actually collapsed our package down i'm actually going to open up the folder here and navigate back to our system and make the other folders we need so we're going to need a textures folder to store the block textures uh, and then we're going to need a models folder to actually store the actual models everything so i'm going to pop back it through this way go to 112 go to smb and we're going to do snow power i think there's actually a way what you could also do is you can right click here and there is a method called show and explorer that's a little bit faster yep show and explorer so we could have bounced uh, to that actually quick quicker by doing it that way um, so actually we'll go use that folder uh, so we're gonna need a texture folder if you look over here you can use another mod for a comparison of what your folder structure should look like uh, i probably should make a guide online about this uh, there's a lot of people who have actually asked what the folder structure looks like uh, so you need textures and there you're going to also need a blocks folder so blocks is where the block textures are going to go uh, we are not going to have a separate uh, texture for the item so we're just going to actually have one texture set uh, we may have multiple sides we'll get to that in a second uh, well more than a second and we're going to do and we need a models folder so model folders we're actually going to store everything and we're going to do our models the old school way rather than the, the using the forge methodology uh, there is a separate way to do it that's what i've been using for a lot of the newer stuff and of course we got our models folder and that's actually our texture folder for our models luckily they're the name the same thing and our models folder there will be a block it's surprising that they use for the textures they call the textures blocks but when you go to the model it's just called block i don't know if that's uh, a small oversight on their part or nobody really cared to double check uh, so we have a block and item so we're gonna separate for those and we can actually pop this open and we can actually grab say something and look at it uh, so let's say i want to say the glass pressure plate may be a good example Actually, I got a better idea. So rather than looking at ICBM for this, if you ever want to figure out what a JSON render looks like for Minecraft, the best way to do this is to actually go, and we're going to pop a random folder and then just explore around real quick, is to go and look at the Minecraft code. So Minecraft assets is a great way to do this. And I actually keep assets on hand in case I need to go look through them. And we'll go through and you can actually look at stuff. So you can look at block states. You want to see all the different uh, states for things like planks and stuff and see what they actually look like and see all their different uh, items and everything else. Uh, but one way to do it is just to go in here, so models and block, and we're just gonna grab, say, a random block, and we'll go RKB Bark, for example. And how this works is it just sets its parent to cube at all, and just sets its texture all to one uh, texture type. So of course we're gonna have more than one texture, we'll get to that eventually, and actually let's just go ahead and copy this entire file. And we'll just rename it. And the name to name this, by the way, is the name of your block uh, as well. So once we get uh, all the models in here, we'll just do that. So in here, and we called it uh, Snow Generator. So that'll be what it is. And we just need some texture for this. So of course, it's going to want to point at our thing. So we're going to do a Snow Generator first. 
is what we're going to call this and we do need to prefix it with snow power and that and that should point at the right directory this is going to be your actual directory of stuff which is right here so assets of snow power is what that references then it's going to be looking at your textures for your blocks board. so it's going to look at the texture folder and then the blocks and then of course it's going to then look for this texture is what it's going to try to look for of course we don't have that in there so it's not going to be missing we'll actually make that in a second before we launch up and show it working uh, the next step is to do our inventory and our inventory is going to be pretty simple so we're going to do this and we what we did we copied uh i believe planks so we're gonna do the same thing and how this works it just sets its parent it's it's that simple it's a little bit complex when you think about it because minecraft does a little bit over does it in some regards and of course it's just gonna be snow generator and that should work and of course we just got to set the parent to uh, snow generator as well and we need to prefix it with of course our actual mod here and make sure i spell that right generator yeah it's close enough if it doesn't work we'll fix it uh snow power and that should point at the right thing it should work and we should have an item that actually shows up everything now for the textures you can make them with anything like i will more often than none use paint in this case what we're going to do in order to quick start our textures and save a little bit of time is we're just going to copy something from minecraft so minecraft has textures in it already and as long as you're using those textures for a mod in minecraft you kind of can get away with using them i do not recommend just copying textures and using them long term I'll more than likely come back through here and redo these textures after I'm done with these tutorials. But you can come in into the textures folder, go to a block, and just pick a block you like. Uh, in our case, um, I'm probably going to go grab the furnace. Because what we're making is, well, it's going to look like a furnace. And we don't care about this one. What I want to do is I want to grab... So I want to use the furnace side for the sides and the furnace top for the top, except we're going to change what the top looks like. So I'm going to copy both of these and I'm going to put them in our block folder. And of course they are going to get renamed, but what we'll do in order to rename these is we're actually going to go up to here and we're going to call this um, snow generator. So that'll be the texture that loads by default. And we're going to call this, of course, snow generator top. So I'm going to hit rename, make sure I grab that file. So that way they match each other and we're going to do this underscore top we'll have to set this in here and i think how you actually set this is this will be i believe size is what this is there actually is a way to look at this and i believe we can find an example here somewhere uh block concrete maybe no, concrete sets all reinforced glass sets all i believe as well Oh, yeah, yeah, we can probably go grab this from the actual explosives. Now, this is the other way I was talking about. There is another way to actually um, do all of your actual rendering is you can use the block state system and just use the Forge's version of the render system for JSON in order to just bypass the need to make a separate item and block. But, of course, we're doing it the Minecraft way to make it easier. Um, and there should be one in here called explosives. There we go. So, yeah, this one actually uses all the different directions. And there should have been uh, one that just... It's called side you know we'll leave it as side and we'll just see if we get lucky and that is actually what it is or no eh. we'll, we'll we'll take the actual hard way and we'll do the hard way so with the hard way of course you need to actually copy and paste it all to different ones and of course it's all different stuff you can actually rotate these as well so say for example you set this all up to render perfectly in the north direction and then you wanted to say make it face east there actually is code you can run to make it rotate each direction i'm not going to show that in this tutorial but i just wanted to let you guys know that that is possible um so of course with this one we want to go do this real quick paste that and that should get us that, so that will give us our top. And we're just going to use the top for the bottom as well, just for the moment. We'll make a bottom later. And then we're going to leave our particle as uh, the same as everything else. And that should work. And we're going to tell this to uh, indent with two spaces because it's going to be finicky and warn us every single time. Uh, you can also hit Control alt l to reformat any file you're in. Although I do recommend if you do it for the Java stuff, you fix your format beforehand or it'll look really fugly. An example I can give is if I... Uh, well, actually, I, I have mine already set up. I was going to show you an example of it, and then I just remembered to set up on mine. Uh, so we've got everything good for that now. So that should make sure our textures actually load, and then our item should load. We have our localization, so we should be set. So we can hit Run on this, so we can close this down and launch it up again. Okay, so more loading.
as soon as we get this done, uh, we'll probably do some custom textures here. So it, when I said you can pretty much use everything, the thing I usually just use is paint. So you load this up and say this is our top. What I'm thinking we could easily do with this, and we might as well do this while we're waiting for the Minecraft to load, is we can literally just say take this and just stencil some slots on the top of this to kind of give it a explanation of why can it uh, actually suck through this stuff. If you don't like the scale of how this looks, GIMP is another really good option and of course you will find people that do use Photoshop for Minecraft. Uh, I think Photoshop is a bit of an overkill. Um, same with Illustrator which is the other tool made by Adobe. Uh, I don't think Adobe's even recommended for doing pixel art. But you can do... Paint works amazing. Uh, as long as you don't need an alpha texture it works amazing. Once you need like alpha textures then of course you actually have to start using other tools. Um, Paint.net is another option. And we'll go ahead and do this. Uh, and that should work. And then what we want to do is maybe put some blue color here. Actually, no, we want to put some lava. And what I'll do is I'll come back through here and I'll make some cleaner textures. So what I'll come through here is probably copy in some lava textures. Uh, and actually make it look nice. I might up the resolution of it. So I might go from 16 by 16, 32 by 32. And those of you that actually cry like, oh, you shouldn't be using 32 by 32 textures. Keep in mind what you can do is up res it. Leave the actual edge border of this alone. So it still looks like it's 16 by 16. And then just play around with the slots and cells to make sure that they actually have like a visual to work with. I'll go ahead and close that so we actually have that worked with and we'll touch that a little bit more in a second. And we'll go ahead and see if our all of our renders loaded. Now this is unscripted so if this breaks it just it broke because I forgot about to do something. Uh, our item works and although we probably should consider doing a different rotation for this but it looks like um, this might be looking for a block state so we may have to make a block state anyways. Uh, to do to do yeah, I think that you do have to do a block state. Let me double check this. Uh, what blocks do I have in here? So I have concrete in here, and then I have concrete in here. Yeah. Why don't I have a model for it and a... Bit of a confusing mess here. Uh, let's go ahead and look at Minecraft for this and just double check what Minecraft does. And we're gonna go ahead and pop back at the GIF folder with this and then pop out a point directory and get the Minecraft assets. Uh, let's do 112, Minecraft, block states, and we copy planks. So this is literally just gonna probably be, yeah, it's what it's gonna be. So it's gonna be just a single file telling it where the block model is. This is the reason I don't really like how Minecraft implemented this render code, is you have three files just to render a block. That's three times more than you needed. You should have had one file that handles all of your render logic and you're done. That's how Minecraft should have actually designed their system. Let's go ahead and close this, and that means we do need to make a block state file. So it's Minecraft, uh, so it's our package structure, then block states. I should just be able to go like this. And then block states, I believe it is. I have an S on the end of it? Yes, it does. And then here, we're just gonna put this here, and this will be snow generator. And then this wants to point at our model location, which our model location is going to be uh, snow power and it's going to be snow generator. This is going to look in our block folder. So that's the reason why you don't have to specify block folder is it is all guaranteedly going to go in the block folder and look for that. Um, so that looks good. Looks like we don't have to do anything else and everything is cool. And we're going to go ahead and have to relaunch. Actually, we're going to try a trick. So if you hit F3T, it should reload your resource folder. And watch it go to 1073 frames per second when it does that. The sad part is uh, Minecraft is literally actually frozen when it does this, so you can't do anything else while it reloads all the resources. But F3T will debug reload um, resources. So if you're working in an external folder and you want to test and do things, it's really, really cool if you want to just do simple things like uh, adjust renders on 3D models, um, make sure to fix like variants and stuff, fix little spelling errors. It does work for that. It does not look like it is going to actually reload our state file for us. So we are going to have to reload the game. That makes sense. It's only going to look for files that it knows exist. Or IntelliJ didn't copy it to out the folder. I'm going to think actually IntelliJ is probably more likely the uh, culprit here. Okay, we just wait for it to load. So yeah, I guess I, actually while we're waiting, we can mess with the texture somewhere. So really with this is basically what I'm thinking though is for the textures is just a slot at the top to show you have lava. And then on the sides, it did just be slightly different. So that way it does not look like a direct copy of the furnace. But it really, that's about it. You don't really need to do much with these. 
maybe do some small stylization corrections to them. Like I can sit here and maybe copy this and copy this up to the top so it's got a little bit more detail to it. And it doesn't take much to make textures. It, paint works really, really well. If somebody tells you paint is a bad idea to use for Minecraft textures, I, it works. You can sit here and look at it. It does the colors pretty well. It just you can't do alpha with this. You can't do tools and stuff. And if you wanted a tool that does do alpha, you can hit, um, you can install GIMP and I can sit here and open with GIMP. I can open with paint.3D, which is included with Windows nowadays. Uh, there is other options. And we'll use probably GIMP probably for uh, more complicated ones in the future. With GIMP, I actually can do cool things like smudging. So say, for example, I wanted to blur this, which is what we're not actually going to do. You can also change the size here so you can actually more refine and blur this so it looks a little nicer. And I'll do that real quick just to get a, a little bit more gray detail out of the middle of that. And you override. You can also save this, of course, into a GIMP file format that you can repeatedly use. Big thing with GIMP, though, using it is that you have layers available. So you can actually layer your textures up. So that way, if you make a mistake, you don't make that mistake on all the layers, you make it only on the layer you're editing. And it makes it much easier to clean up issues or test various, if you just want to test to see what a star looks like on the side of it. Anyways, there's our block, it's rendering. It doesn't have any functionality. So we right click it, we can't do anything with it, we left click it, but uh, when it comes to the actual, what this is gonna do, you're pretty much just gonna build a field of these probably with pipes between them. And that's gonna generate power for you. So now we'll get on to the uh, next video, which will do the actual logic. This one I did say was probably going to be short. It is really simple to do that, to do uh, actual textures and models for stuff. You just have to get your stuff set up. If you want to do it the Minecraft way, you'd have to do three files to actually get everything running. Plus, you have to then, of course, I think, call the registry call. Actually, really cool experiment since we, uh, we didn't actually confirm. Let me close all of these. We never did check if this was absolutely required. So let's remove this and stop Minecraft and rerun it and check in the name of science if that actually is required. If that's not required, then that's one less thing you have to worry about when you're making a mod with blocks. So we'll go ahead and run that up again and test this out. This actually doesn't uh, isn't required to be kind of cool because that, that means you can pretty much toss the uh, common client proxy out of your mod if you don't have complex behavior. Because really the, the client common proxy are only needed if you have to load code on one side versus the other. If you don't ever have to do that, you don't need common proxies. I see a lot of mod tutorials that force you to set up these proxies, that force you to set up a reference document. Like you'll see a mod that'll be like, hey, you have to have this mod.items file. And then they'll say, okay, put one item in there. And you're like, well, if you have a mod with one item, you don't need a mod.items uh, file. You don't need a blog.items file. Yes, it makes your code clean. It makes it easier to reference things. But really, when you want to come down in here, you really just need a single mod class file. It may not be as clean, but if you want to make this look cleaner, you can do really simple things like this and just do a block cut between it. It may look a little like ugly to some developers, but this is a really easy way to break your text down. Uh, there are other ways to do this um, to make it a lot cleaner, but a lot of developers, when they teach tutorials, will go like, hey, you have to do it this way, you have to do it that way, and they don't explain that that is entirely optional. How you develop your mod is really just down to how you want to develop your mod. Uh, don't follow another developer's style guides just simply because you're like, oh, that's a cool developer, I'm going to do what he does. Figure out what works for you. What works for me is that there's a single class file that works for everything. Only time you should ever need a mod.items uh, file or a block.items file is when you have a lot of stuff, when it gets out of hand. And we can go up to ICBM Classic just to look at this, and I don't even think ICBM Classic's out of hand, and it has basically this entire block up here of items and blocks it has to deal with. And that's not that big of a deal because you're never going to be in this class file. Like when you're working on your mod, once you register stuff, you are never going to open this class file again, unless you need to come back in and register another thing. And the class file can get as big as it wants. I mean, when you start to get probably to a thousand lines, you have probably got too big and you might want to start separating out certain method calls to other classes just to save yourself sanity. Any stylation though is really just on the sanity. There are some things that you don't want to do though, because there are some stupider things that probably don't work like don't do use anonymous classes if you can avoid it get rid of your anonymous classes uh, if you don't know what that means well look it up and you'll figure it out anyways our stuff is actually loaded it probably loaded a few minutes ago and we'll go pop in here and see if our block still works our item failed to work so you do need this for the item so we have now confirmed that 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 is a required mint so we'll go ahead and do that. Actually, we'll hit Control-Z a couple times. That's much simpler. Go ahead and format it, and we're done. So I'll see you in the next video where we'll actually code the logic for this machine, and maybe we'll do a fourth video where we do a GUI, though unlikely.